So much talk about AI, but is it ready for prime time? Hey everyone, Stefan here. I hope you're doing well. So much talk about artificial intelligence, AI tools for editing, even in photography. But do they actually hold up? Are they ready for prime time? Some of them, no. Let's be honest. But some of them, ooh, they're amazing. So today I'll share with you my personal view. Let's have a look. But instead of looking at this old man for too long, why don't we jump straight into Photoshop? The three products I'll be talking about are Photoshop, Topaz Photo AI, and my absolute favorite, which is from a company called Retouch for Me, which really shaves a huge amount of time off my retouching and does a mind blowing job. And we will get to that in a minute. So first, what everybody is talking about is the ability to add things in Photoshop, hip hip hooray. We can make a selection like this one on the shoulder of Alina, go into the creative fill area, type in parrot, hit return, let the AI do a little bit of thinking and surprise, surprise, we will get a little parrot sitting on the shoulder. Let's hope. This is in real time, by the way. I don't speed this up. So here we have a little parrot sitting on the shoulder. And the AI has created three little parrots for us. This is number two and this is number three. For social media, this is really impressive. But in real life, it's not quite there yet. So let's take this picture here. And let's say we want to extend this. We want to make this a square. One of the new features in Photoshop is that we can extend it with generative expand. So let's do this. And theoretically, Photoshop will now create all those areas out of the blue. There will be a little surprise. The generated images were removed. So clearly Adobe has very, very strict limitations of when the AI believes that there is too much skin, but it is how it is. So how would we do this? Well, we kind of have to put a t-shirt in there. Guess what? If you now extend this to a square, and now that the skin is covered, it does it. It gives us three variations, one, two, and three and that actually looks very impressive considering we're coming from this the problem lies in the details you won't see it like this but wait until i zoom in when you look at the arm you can clearly see on the left side is the original image on the right side is what adobe has created it is low resolution it doesn't match the details of our original image. If I would print this, it would be very obvious. So let's go back to Alina and talk about the other thing, the restoration side of things. So if we zoom in 100%, we see that her left eye is beautifully in focus. Her right eye is slightly out of focus. This is something that nowadays can be fixed quite easily. So I duplicate the layer quickly and I will use Photo AI. This will analyze the image and see what the AI believes could be improved. This is before, this is after, before, after. Sharpen the eye beautifully, that's all we needed, and return to Photoshop. Now, of course, it has sharpened everything. That's not what we want. So I will create a layer mask. I will take my brush, foreground white, and I just brush in the eye. And that's about it. That gives us that sharpness that we want. Now to my favorites, which are from Retouch For Me. You see, I have a good amount of plugins in here. I initially downloaded the demos for the heel and the clean backdrop. And they were so impressive that I bought them straight away. I got in contact with Retouch For Me and they gave me a promo code, which you find in the description below to get a pretty decent discount on those plugins, should you then like them as well. Download the demos, 
have a play around with it and see if they cut off the amount of time that they do for me and then you decide if you want to buy them or not so what do they do you could say alina is perfect look at her well in real life we would still go in and fix small little things First we would use the healing brush and then we would do some dodging and burning and then at the end give it some extra volume again with dodging and burning. Well, these plugins do a big, big part for us. And I'll show you. It's so, so straightforward and easy. First thing I do is I duplicate the layer and then I just go to filters, retouch for me and I say heal. And it will open up a dialog box. In general, you can just leave it on auto. It will scale and set these close-up portraits half length or full length by itself. Hey, it's AI. You have the original image and you have the retouch image. You wouldn't see much difference in this, but once we apply it to the layer, you'd be surprised. The most important part is this part up here, make mask. To not burn it into my original image, I wanted to create a separate layer with the adjustments. And you look at it and you think, nothing has changed. Until we look at this layer with all the changes. These are all the areas that the AI has retouched. Let's go to 100%. This is before. This is after. Before. After. It's impressive, you have to say. And then we go into the second plugin, which is Dodge and Burn. This is not Dodge and Burn for effect. This is Dodge and Burn to even out. This is something that we've done for years and years and years to remove small little shadows, bags under the eyes, etc., etc. Again, it will open up in its own window. And in this case, it has a few extra options. You have original and preview. If you click on preview, you see which selections it will affect. You have a warmth slider if you want to add some warmth and a blend. I always leave the blend at 100 and then adjust it in the layers palette in Photoshop itself. Then you have a tick box for a soft light layer. This is something that we've been preaching for years and years and years. Every retouch should be non-destructive. So you want to retouch things on different layers. And in this case, you want to enable soft light layer. Click on apply, let the magic happen. So what you see now is what the plugin has done. So neutral gray doesn't affect the image underneath at all. Everything that is darker will burn the image and everything that is brighter will lighten it up. Creating this by hand would take a very, very long time. But this is so detailed, so all we need to do is now switch this to soft light and voila, this is before, this is after. If that doesn't blow your mind, then I cannot help it. Or you have never retouched on that level. And the next thing you could do is skin tone. So skin tone is not what you initially would think. It doesn't just adjust all the skin tones and make them all even or whatever. It looks for color casts that are in certain areas. It's very, very, very subtle. I applied it as a soft light layer and you see faint where it adjusted. If we set this to soft light and we switch it on and off, that's off that's on. You see it in this area here. There is a little bit of a blue cast. I usually use this at about 50% and there you go. Very, very subtle, but that's the point of retouching. Subtle changes make a huge impact overall. The third one for me would be portrait volume. Well, Stefan, you jumped over the mattifier. Well, in this case, there are no strong highlights. Mattifier will look at areas that have very specular highlights. In this case, very, very soft, it's soft lighting, so we don't need it, but we will look at it in the next image. So for me, right now, we just go to portrait volume. So the first dodge and burn was to correct. This one is to enhance. Yet again, I leave it on auto, and this will be a little heavy-handed. 
we switch this over to soft light and you see how much volume it creates before and after. Zooming out before and after. To my eye, that is way too much. Again, so I will dial it in to about 50%. Here you go. This is before, this is after, before, after. And that looks pretty darn good. We have not done any manual retouching and it is perfect. Before, after. The most important part for me here is that we kept the integrity of the detail. I do not like Plastic Fantastic. I'm not a fan of Barbie doll skin. I want to see all those little pores. That's what makes humans humans. So these plugins do not destroy the image. They just enhance it and make your life so much easier so quick. So without explaining all of this and just doing it, it is a question of maybe 30 seconds. Let's revisit this image here. Monica has amazing skin. There's very little that you would assume that we have to do, but nevertheless, let's just do it anyway. Retouch for me, heal. Hit apply. And it still found a few little spots, but what will make a massive difference is the corrective dodge and burn. So let's do this retouch, dodge and burn. Hit apply, switch it to soft light, before, after, before, after. That's already all we need for this. So let's look at this image here and see what the plugins can do for us. Retouch for me, heal. And I'll speed this up for you now. And these are all the small little retouches that it has done. So this is before, this is after, before, after. Then we go for the corrective dodge and burn, which usually makes the biggest difference. Again, we have the soft light layer, switch it to soft light and voila, before, after, before, after. It will take you a very long time doing this by hand. And a beautiful thing, and that's so, so important with high-end retouching, it maintains all the structure, all the pores. It just looks amazing. And of course, this works for all skin tones. So let's have a look at this one. Retouch for me, heal. Before, after before, after, use dodge and burn, switch it to soft light, before, after, before, after, so beautiful. Another example, this is before, this is with healing, corrective dodge and burn, adjusting the highlights a little bit with the mattifier, as I mentioned before, then adjusting the skin tone, especially in this area here. Then we applied portrait volume, again, just on about 30%, and that's it. Before, after. 30 second job. And of course, all of this can be automated. Retouch for me has their own panel. I myself created an action that runs the way I like it, and I'm happy to show you exactly how I create that action, which hopefully not only helps you with this specific task, but also with other actions that you might want to create within Photoshop. I will show you that in a separate episode. Nevertheless, it created a duplicate of the original layer, which is switched off at the moment. Then heal, dodge and burn, highlights, skin tones, volume, and I've also created a sharpening layer should I want to apply additional sharpening. So let's switch them all off. Heal, dodge and burn corrective, applying the mattifier, adjusting the skin tones, adding some volume, and we're done. Zooming out, this is before, this is after. It takes so little time for an amazing result. Now, the last plugin which I need to mention, which it saves me so much time, is this thing here. It's called 
clean backdrop. If you're a studio photographer and you work on a psych or if you work on paper, you will know that this paper is never clean, never completely flat and always a pain to retouch. It's time consuming. It's not difficult, but it's time consuming. Well, that's what this plugin is for. So when we look at this image, it looks okay. But looking at the floor, yeah, that's how my floor sometimes looks like. But I need to get that photo out and I don't want to spend hours. So what do I do? I duplicate this layer, go into filter, retouch for me, clean backdrop. Now, the one thing I will check in this plugin is which method I will use. Is it fine, medium or is it coarse? So I will zoom in and I believe in this case it will probably be fine because there's a lot of small little scratches in there. And I want to create a mask as well. I want to work non-destructive as much as possible. And voila, before, after, hallelujah. Well, there you go. I hope that was a little bit helpful. And as I mentioned, the link is in the description below. Save yourself some money and even more importantly, save yourself a good chunk of time when you edit your portraits. And in the next episode, I will show you how I create that action, that stack, so it's even more flexible, one-click solution. Well, nearly, never, nothing is ever a one-click solution, but it gets you there much, much quicker. And as it is on YouTube, you know, you have to ask, subscribe, click the bell, you know all the beautiful things, leave a comment if you like. And that's it from me. Now, back into the real world, get some shooting. Be creative, create something awesome.